Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to the first webinar of 2021 for Give Atlanta. Thank you so much for attending. So for today's webinar, we'll be going over a couple of things. We're first going to be going over some fundraising challenge basics so that you're familiar with this year's challenge. Getting started, how to get started on the platform. We're also going to be going over prizes and bonuses that are going to be available and you'll have an opportunity to win throughout the challenge and some important details. And at the end, we'll also be going over any questions and answers. Uh, feel free to utilize the questions and answers tool uh, on your Zoom dashboard. As we go through this webinar, um, put in your questions through that area and then at the end, we'll be answering them. My name is Lisa and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause and I'm really excited to um, get into Give Atlanta this year. So before we get into the details of Give Atlanta, I just wanted to share a little bit more information about giving days in general um, and how do fundraising challenges overall work if this is your first time participating in a fundraising challenge. Um, so fundraising challenges are a really amazing opportunity to compete with other nonprofits to win prizes. Like I said, we'll go through the different challenges and leaderboards um, that we'll have available this year. Um, and one of the reasons why that's so beneficial is that you really get to motivate um, and have a dedicated messaging campaign to share with your donors. So you're sharing the mission of your organization um, and you're also working with other organizations in your community to help raise money for either similar causes or for your community. Um, so it's an overall really great opportunity to engage with your volunteers, engage with your board, community partners, uh, sponsors, etc. So a couple of basics for this year's event. As always, Give Atlanta is hosted by Atlanta Magazine. It's going to start on October 19th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's going to end on November 9th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's going to be weekly challenges and prizes that are going to be available that as a participating nonprofit, you will have the opportunity to win. And as well, Give Atlanta Magazine will feature profiles of participating nonprofits. Um, on this webinar, we have Sean from um, Atlanta Magazine. So I just want to um, give him the opportunity to share a little bit more about Atlanta Magazine and the challenge. Thanks, Lisa, and welcome to everybody. Uh, we look forward to working with you again. Many of you are uh, uh, repeat participants in the challenge, and we have a new, uh, few new participants this year that we look forward to welcoming. Um, I'll give a quick couple of notes, and I'm also uh, available to answer any of the specific questions that might come up relative to, uh, to the magazine and whatnot at the end. So real quick, uh, this particular image is actually the cover of this year's Give Atlanta magazine, which is due out uh, to our readers any day now. Uh, and in fact, I'll be sending each of you a digital link uh, to the Give Atlanta magazine within the next day or two. So you have kind of, of an advance notice, if you will, of this year's uh, Give Atlanta magazine with y'all's profiles uh, included inside. I'll take this opportunity as well, Lisa, if I may, just to give a quick overview of our plans for digital and social promotion in the coming days and weeks leading up to the challenge. Um, and also after this webinar, I'll be sending each of our nonprofit partners a more specific schedule of the uh, campaigns that we have planned for digital and social promotion to support the challenge, number one. And we obviously wanna drive awareness and traffic to the Mighty Cause Give Atlanta site um, before and during the challenge. 
And then we're also going to be highlighting and promoting each one of you uh, individually via social posts throughout the process. So just know we're uh, putting kind of the full force of our Atlanta digital promotional uh, capabilities behind this, this initiative. It's, it's one of the most important things we do during the year. Let's face it, um, we've all been through <laughs> challenging times, obviously, and, and we're looking forward to this year's challenge in particular. So I'll finish on the fact that one of my follow-up items from this webinar is you'll all receive both the digital link to the Give Atlanta magazine and also an overview of the schedule of digital promotion that we have planned over the next few weeks. Thanks, Lisa. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Sean. So uh, to begin participating in Give Atlanta magazine, uh, there are just some couple of things that you'll want to consider steps to do. So as a participating organization, your organization is already registered and good to go to participate. Uh, so what you'll need to do then is to update your organization profile. That's where donors are going to make their donation to support your organization plan the fundraising campaign that you want to have for Give Atlanta. How can you take advantage of all of the prizes that will be available to you and how do you build a campaign around that? Promoting your giving campaign on social media. We have templates available to you that you can utilize uh, that allow you to quickly and easily share your campaign on social media or email it to donors. If you are looking for supporters to participate in the campaign in a different way, you can ask or invite them to actually create peer to peer fundraisers and um, we'll go through that a little bit more in our second webinar we'll be hosting in October. And of course, then raise money for your organization throughout the challenge period. Alright, so getting started. For those of you who are brand new to the platform, we're going to be going over going over uh, our dashboard and all of the tools and features that we have. For those returning organizations, this is going to be a refresher of all the tools that we have. Um, you may see some updates or some changes that we've made. Uh, so we'll try to go through um, each one of those um, so you feel familiar with the platform if it's been a while that you've been on the platform. So. As an administrator for your organization, when you head to your organization, you're going to have a dashboard that allows you to manage your organization and make any necessary edits that you need to make. One of the things that you may be directly prompted to is your overview. That's the first section of your dashboard. And that's going to give you just a quick look quick stats on your organization. It's going to show you in the past 30 months um, how much you've raised, how many donors you've had. You can customize your metrics there. Um, so that's just a quick overview of how your organization is doing and any quick metrics that you need. Underneath your overview, you may see on the image dashboard, you see organization page. That's how you get to the actual profile of your organization and where you can begin editing stuff, which we'll get to in a second. Underneath that, we have fundraising tools which allows you to um, access any peer-to-peer -peer campaigns if you have those created, uh, add matching grants, um, get access to a widget, anything related to helping with your fundraising strategies. Reports provides you all of your donation reporting um, tools. Uh, if you need to uh, review do donor retention reports, if you are a returning organization, those are all available there. Checkout flow will allow you to customize your checkout flow, what donors will see when they click donate. You can add a thank you page and a message. And then settings will allow you to add admins, set up direct deposit, um, edit your legal info, et cetera. And we'll go over some of those more in detail um, in a minute. So as I mentioned just a couple of slides back, one of the things that you're going to first want to focus on is customizing your organization profile, because this is going to be the main page that you're going to send to your supporters and your donors. If you're brand new to the platform, 
Um, we do have a to-do list available that you may want to consider following. It's not required. However, we strongly recommend to completing them if you are brand new to the platform. Um, and it allows you to just get acquainted with the platform and um, check off some couple of key things that we feel aren't um, helpful and necessary for you to start. If you're a returning organization, you want to make sure that you review that the content and description that you have on your organization page. Um, think about what type of story you want to tell this year as opposed to last year. What's changed about your organization? Maybe you want to change any images that you've added last year. Um, I recommend just taking a quick look and seeing again, how can you um, refresh your page and, and make it new for donors and kind of share with them your current mission, what are your goals for this year's campaign? If you are new to the platform, one of the things that you'll be able to do is add a logo and a banner image. If you're returning, if you want to update, update those images, you can do so as well. One of the things that you can also do is um, add a theme color and a theme color is what follows uh, or is what is repeated throughout your page. Um, you want to set that to your brand color again for a returning organization. If you have changed your um, brand color for your nonprofit for some reason, or you just want to update the color that you've displayed there, you can utilize our theme tool um, on the organization page to do so. For logos, if you are looking to update that or add one in, it is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Um, so what that means in layman's terms is that it needs to be a square image. So if you have a rectangular image, it will not fit into the logo area. So you wanna make sure that you are using a square image um, for your logo. For the banner image, it's rectangular um, and our site is mobile responsive. So uh, if you are adding a banner image to your organization page, page just note that it may change um, how it is viewed depending on the screen size a donor or a supporter is looking at it. Um, we try to make sure that it fits in frame um, depending on the screen size. So as I mentioned just a minute ago, um, the description area is where you're really going to share the details of your story or the mission that you're sharing. There's an inline text editor that you can utilize. Uh, so if you want to add images, if you want to um, embed a video that you have from YouTube, um, you can actually do all of that through the inline text editor. And you can also customize the text uh, to fit your brand color. Um, you can utilize any of the format, formatting tools that we have available on there. We do also have a custom tab area. So if for some reason this section doesn't have enough space for you to add in all of your info, um, then we do have a second section that you can add on. Um, if you want to maybe, for example, highlight all of your board members and share an image and description about them, um, you can have a section, second section that um, is a second tab on your organization page if that's enough, not enough area for you. So as you begin editing your organization page, how it looks stylistically, you've added your branding and your messaging, the goal that you're going to have, you also then want to edit your actual donation form. So when donors go to your page and they click donate, uh, what are the donation levels and descriptions that they're going to see? Um, so you can do this as you see in the image in on your dashboard through the checkout flow section. And you can then directly go in and edit your donation amounts. We have four uh, pre-populated amounts already on there. You may see if you edited that last year, you may see what you've had last year. Um, but if you're brand new, you wanna go in and um, if you would like to edit your donation levels um, to fit whatever campaign that you have. If you would also like to add descriptions, you can do so by simply selecting the pencil icon that you also see in the image there. Um, and you'll be able to quickly edit the amount and add descriptions. Um, and the descriptions can be anything that you think will hit home with donors 
um, to make a, a donation. For example, maybe if you're a school organization, you want to share that uh, for $25, they can um, sponsor a student on a school trip or for $50, they can purchase a school a student's school supplies for the year. Um, such descriptions as that are actually really impactful for donors and they can actually really help you um, and not only having a donor make a donation, but maybe make a donation that is higher than they were going to make before. Whatever custom donation levels that you've entered, there's always a custom donation amount. So donors can always enter whatever amount that they want. The lowest donation amount on the platform that a donor can make a donation is $5. Um, on our checkout flow as well, donors will have the ability to make a donation via credit card, PayPal, or ACH, so directly through their bank. Um, we utilize Plaid, uh, which is a payment processing um, system for ACH donations. It's completely secure, um, and there's actually lower processing fees for ACH donations. So if you have a donor that is going to make a large donation for your organization, you know, $1,000, so for example, um, ACH will be recommended to them because that per, um, provides lower processing fees for them. And of course, as you're editing your checkout flow, um, you can preview it within this section, uh, but you can also go on your organization page, click donate and see what the process looks like for them as well. Within the checkout flow section, in addition to editing your donation form, you also will have the ability to edit and add a thank you page and thank you message. So once a donor has hit submit, has clicked donate, and their donation has been processed, there's going to be a thank you page that automatically populates on their page. Um, so the thank you page allows you to add your own custom messaging. So if you want to add your own custom thank you, maybe you want to add a photo um, or you want to direct them to a certain area on your site or you want to direct them to subscribe to a newsletter, et cetera, you can utilize the thank you page section on your dashboard to edit that messaging. If you're a returning nonprofit, highly recommend that you are reviewing the content that you had last year and making sure that it's up to date for this year so that donors aren't seeing any outdated language or links, et cetera. So in addition to receiving a thank you page, uh, the donor is also going to automatically be emailed a donation receipt. So we handle all of the tax receipts. It's sent to them based off the email address that they've provided throughout the checkout form. However, if you want to also add your own custom thank you message on that receipt, uh, you can do so also through the dashboard and the checkout flow section. Um, you can add whatever custom message you want. You cannot add any photos or uh, videos. It's just standard text that you are adding on there and it will be at the top of the email for them to see um, once they open up their email. So again, this can be found in the checkout flow section of the dashboard. As you start receiving donations on the platforms, uh, you're as an administrator, you're actually going to be receiving email notifications letting you know that a donation has been made. It's going to say, hey, congratulations, Bob Smith made a $50 donation to your organization. That email is just going to include that notification. However, if you want to see more information on that donation, or if you're logged in as an admin and you wanna review all the donations that have come through, you can actually access that donor data through your dashboard as well, through the report section, as I mentioned a couple slides back. The report section allows you to review all of your donations and you'll be able to see the donor's name, their amounts, the date they made their donation uh, and their email address as well. If you want to filter or maybe you want to look at a specific challenge week or you want to search for a particular donor, you can utilize our search and filter tools on the donations report. Uh, and as you may see in the image right here, uh, we're providing really the brief necessary details 
for uh, on the don donor report uh, about your donor. However, if you want more detailed information, uh, for example, you want to know the time that they made their donation, you want to see if they covered any fees, or you want to see what their mailing address is, uh, you can actually download the report. Um, as you see in the image here, it's in the top right corner. So you just download it and it's going to be downloaded as an Excel or CSV file. And within that Excel document, you're, that's where you're going to see much more detailed information on your donors. So all of that additional information will be available in the downloadable report. For disbursements, um, we will email you when we've sent out a disbursement. We send out disbursements twice a month or once a month, depending on your disbursement method. If you are receiving check disbursements, we only send out disbursements once a month on the 10th. So we highly recommend setting up direct deposit because you'll receive disbursements twice a month. And as well, check disbursements incur a $5 service fee. Direct deposit, there is no service fee for um, sending out disbursements. So as an administrator, you will receive an email letting you know when we've sent out your disbursement. In that email, we'll actually have a link to your disbursement report. Uh, your disbursement report is very similar to your donations report. What we do is we have a comprehensive breakdown of your disbursement report so that you always know what is included or um, broken down in that disbursement that we're sending over. Um, so that report can also be found in your report section of your dashboard. And in that breakdown, it will include all the donors that are included in that disbursement. And we also break down at the bottom all of the processing fees, if donors covered fees, et cetera, so you can understand the net breakdown of that disbursement. So that will be emailed to you, but you can always ask, um, you can always uh, review any previous disbursements uh, in your dashboard through your report section. One of the fundraising tools that organizations have available to them on the platform is matching grants. And matching grants is a really great uh, fundraising strategy that many organizations utilize for giving challenges. We'll actually be going over matching grants in more detail in the next webinar. We'll talk more about how do you uh, receive a matching grant, what type of matching grant to create. However, um, just to quickly go over, we do have a tool that allows you to input and display a matching grant if you have received one. Uh, so that is something that's available in the fundraising tools section. Again, it's a tool that you can utilize for your fundraising. A match can be paid through the platform and we highly recommend if you're currently in talks with a potential matching grant sponsor that they are paid through the platform because only online donations will count towards leaderboards and prizes. And you can actually set up a lot of different types of matches through the platform. You can set up a one-to-one -one match. You can set up a match that um, is only achieved if you receive a certain amount of donors or donations. So there's a lot of opportunities available um, on the platform in regards to adding and showcasing a specific type of match. Um, again, we'll go into more details about matches in our next webinar in October. So after you've received all of your donations, you've used all of the fundraising tools, there are a couple of key settings that are going to be important for you um, in regards to any backend information. So within the settings section of your dashboard, that's where you're going to be able to manage all of your administrators, update your legal information and set up that direct deposit like I mentioned um, in regards to our disbursements. So for setting up administrators, you can do so uh, by selecting the admin section of your dashboard. Oops, let me go back. Um, set up the admin section of your uh, settings area, and you'll be able to add or remove administrators. 
within the organization info section, that's where you're going to be able to update and add um, any legal address, uh, legal mailing address or legal name information. That information is really most important if you are receiving check uh, disbursements. Within disbursement settings, you can actually review the legal mailing address we have on file and also set up direct deposit within that section. If you need to update your direct deposit, if you have participated last year, you can also do so in your disbursement settings as well. Within your general settings, if you need to update your URL uh, or you want to uh, customize your social share, um, social share refers to um, when you share a link of your organization page on Facebook or Twitter, you may recognize typically there is an image and description that's automatically populated on those platforms. If you want to update that image and that description, you can do so through social share. So again, if you need to update your URL um, or you want to update your social share, that can be through the general settings subsection within your settings. So I just want to highlight a couple of resources that we have available on the platform. So we have a whole nonprofit toolkit that you can find through giveatlanta.org, which I'll show you in just a second. We'll have all of our webinars added to the toolkit. So if someone on your team needs, uh, wants to review a recording of this webinar, they can do so through the toolkit. We also have links to helpful support articles that we have, um, links to different eBooks, uh, we also have, as I mentioned, templates available for social media and email. If you want quick and easy um, templates available to you for your marketing. And we also have Give Atlanta logos and images that you can utilize for your communications and for your marketing strategy. So all of that can be found in the nonprofit toolkit. All right, so I'm going to be going over a breakdown of our prizes and bonuses. We've just added this to the site. So this may be the first time some of you are seeing this year's prizes and bonuses. So for this year, uh, our grand prize, the top three organizations with most dollars raised will win. Um, so the challenge period is the entire challenge time. So from October 19th at 12 p.m to Tuesday, November 9th at 12 p.m. So first place will receive $8,000 plus a three full page four color ad in Atlanta Magazine during the 2022 calendar year. Second prize will be $4,000 plus two full page four color ads in Atlanta Magazine. And third prize will be $2,000 plus three one half page four color ads in Atlanta Magazine. So that is the grand prize challenge. Then each week of the challenge will have its own um, individual challenges or bonus challenges. So for bonus challenge ones, actually any nonprofit that raises $1,000 or more in the first week of the challenge will be entered into a drawing to win a bonus prize. So two organizations will be selected at random and they have the potential to win $1,000 each. Um, so again, you must raise at least $1,000 during the first week of the challenge. The second week of the challenge, the top four organizations that raise the most dollars will win. First prize will be $1,000. Second prize will be $1,000. Third prize will be a one, one half page four color ad. And the fourth is one one fourth page for color ad. And again, that is just during the second week. And then the last bonus challenge will be at, um, during the last week of the challenge. The top four organizations with the most unique donors will win. First prize being $1,000, second prize being $1,000, third being one one half page and fourth one one fourth page for color ad. So some important details just to cover about the Give Atlanta challenge. As I mentioned a couple times, you want to mark this on your calendar if you haven't yet. It starts October 19th at 12 p.m. 
that time is really important. Any donations that come before that time will not count. And it ends on November 9th at 12 p.m. So any donations that come after that time, they will not count. The second webinar will be on Wednesday, September 29th at 2 p.m. I apologize, I misspoke about it being in October. It's gonna be on September 29th at 2 p.m. You can register for that webinar today if you want. It, that is available on the toolkit to register for today. And that's where we're going to talk in more detail about matching grants, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising, all of those common strategy tools that organizations can utilize for giving challenges. If you run into any questions, if you are having trouble with something, please reach out to our support team at Mighty Cause. Um, we are here for any technical support that you need. We are more than happy to help out in whatever way we can. So please reach out to support at mightycause.com. Um, again, we're always here. We uh, support many giving days. So we have a lot of experience of supporting and providing support for organizations that are running really important fundraising campaigns for their nonprofits. So please reach out if you run into any help or have any questions. Okay, so I want to take some time to answer some questions that some people may have about this year's challenge. Um, again, please feel free to um, utilize the uh, Q&A tool. I don't see any questions coming through yet. Lisa, it's yes. Sean, since I have the privilege of having a microphone, <laughs> I'll ask this one out <laughs> loud to get the get the uh, questions going maybe. I'm curious, um, can more than one person have admin privileges for the site, for making changes and edits and whatnot, or should only one person uh, per each nonprofit be designated as the site administrator? Because I, the reason I ask that is, um, Several of our nonprofit partners have requested that more than one person receive all of the email updates from Mighty Cause throughout the process. So I thought I'd, I'd ask that question if maybe somebody was thinking about it. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so you can have as many administrators as you want um, set up as an administrator for your organization. Um, so I would say in most cases, um, organizations have more than one person set up as administrator, unless they're a one man show at their nonprofit. Um, but yes, you can have any, um, you know, however many that you want. Um, we do not have administrative uh, different permissions. So if you're set up as an admin, everyone has the same controls and access as each other. Um, however, if there's, you know, if there's someone, for example, on your finance or accounting team that needs access to reporting, but they don't need to receive an email notification every time a donation is sent to them, that's no problem. You can actually disable that setting. So there are a couple of things that you can adjust and change, you know, if you um, need that on your, uh, for your team. So feel free to reach out to our support team if you run into situations like that, I'm well more than happy either um, clarify or steer you in the right direction. But yes, you can add as many as you want to um, the platform. Um, can employees make personal donations? Um, that I believe is one against the challenge rules. I will have to double check that. I can get back to you on that. Um, but I believe that may be one of the rules of the challenge, um, but I can get back to you on that um, in regards to that question to clarify. Will this PowerPoint be sent out after this? Yes, a recording um, and this PowerPoint and the slide deck will be added to the nonprofit toolkit right after this webinar. So once it's finished, we'll be adding both of those on there. So you have that available to share and add for um, your organization. I 
anyone have any more questions in regards to the challenge I can help answer? If there are any other questions that come through after this webinar, again, you can feel free to reach out to our support team. Or you can reach out to Sean and he can also share with us um, and we can help answer any questions if something, some, something comes to mind after this uh, webinar. Right, I'll reiterate, um, you all should have my contact information. If not, I'll send it out to everybody. Um, you also have obviously the relationship with your um, senior account director at the magazine that you've worked closely with uh, during this process uh, to filter questions through. And then obviously the folks at Mighty Cause. So we're, uh, we're all here to help at any point with any questions or concerns you might have. Um, so thank you for that. And I actually have an answer to that first question that can employees make personal donations. And I'm sorry, I missed that in my mind when I read that out loud. But um, so employees can definitely make their own personal donations to their organizations if they want to. Um, what is not allowed in the rules is employees cannot use organization funds to make donations to their own organization. So as long as it's their own personal donation to their organization, that is completely allowed. Um, but donations using organizations funds or organizations credit card, that is not allowed for the challenge. So just to clarify that. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions coming up. Um, so as I noted, we'll be adding this webinar afterwards to the toolkit. Uh, please register for the second webinar. We'll be going more in depth on the different strategies that are available. If you run into any technical questions, please reach out to our support team and we'd be more than happy to help answer. Um, thank you so much for joining. I hope it was a little bit helpful and a refresher on the platform and the different tools that we have available. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, all of our nonprofit partners. Yes. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.